you ready? You guys are ready. So Ralph, when it comes to a scene like this, what are your initial kind of thoughts? What are you guys looking for as soon as you got here today in Augusta? Well, first of all, my name is Ralph Hicks with the National Transportation Safety Board. I'm a senior investigator. I work out of Marietta, Georgia. Uh, I'm in the eastern region. We cover most of, most of the eastern third of the United States. Uh, I received a call this morning of an aircraft accident um, in Augusta uh, involving an A-36. It's commonly known as a Bonanza, Beechcraft Bonanza. Uh, in this particular case, an A36. It's a straight tail, not the V-tail. Uh, the airplane crashed in a resi residential neighborhood, as you can see behind me. There was an extensive post-crash fire uh, that consumed most of the, the cockpit and the fuselage. Uh, some of the wings and the tail section are still intact. What we're doing right now is we're putting a team together. I have some manufacturers, representatives, and investigators from the uh, aircraft manufacturer. They're on their way out. They'll be arriving late tonight. Um, and the FAA is on scene with me right now. The FAA is always a party to our investigations. And what we do know is that the aircraft took off um, uh, this morning and the crash occurred about 7, 12, 7, 13 uh, a.m. out of Daniel Field. Uh, the, the airplane was, uh, the flight was an instrument flight rules flight plan to New Haven, Connecticut. And so the pilot was qualified to fly instruments. He had an instrument rating and he was a private pilot uh, with about 800 hours of flight time as of last year. And we'll hone that down and get a little bit more information on it. But as you can see, uh, extensive post-crash fire. Uh, we don't know exactly how much fuel he had on board, but we will determine that and go back to the airport and see how much fuel was taken on the airplane, things like that. Uh, I've just taken a, a brief look at the, at the accident site and the airplane. It appears that all the airplane is here. We're not missing anything. Uh, over my right shoulder, as you can see up in the tree, there is a, the outboard section of the left wing is up there and we're making arrangements right now to get that down so we can continue our investigation. Also, several power lines were affected by this and we're working with the power company in Georgia Power right now to restore power so, and make the scene safe so that the team can go in and, and uh, start the investigation. How long would this take for you all to look at? Could this plane be here for days or what are we looking at? We're looking probably at about 24 to 36 hours on scene here. Okay, and then we're going to be, be recovering the airplane, we're recovering the wreckage to a facility in Griffin, Georgia that specializes in aircraft recovery. There we have a hangar that we can lay the airplane out and actually reconstruct it, put everything back together, look at the engine, all the systems, the flight controls, the landing gear, all those things that we need to uh, confirm we're working or not. And so uh, we don't have any ind indications of a distress call at this point. Uh, Daniel Field does not have a tower, and so, um, you know, anything that was uh, recorded may have may have been recorded by someone on their in their airplane but we don't have any indications of a distress call at this time so but we're going to keep looking for things like that we do have some in, uh, some uh, indicators from ring doorbells that they, they may have picked up the airplane uh, either uh, visually or orally so we're going to look at that too when you see where that plane landed in this neighborhood with all these trees and these uh, these homes been in this business for a while, I feel like. Since 1987. Yeah, so you've seen something uh, tragic like this, but sure. the fact that this plane, this pilot landed where he did. Is Very fortunate that this airplane did not hit a house or anybody in, in those houses. So we're very fortunate in this case. Nobody was injured on the ground. Okay. I guess, well, I have one more question. I guess looking at the flight path on Flight Aware, where you can see where they took off from, is, it, is, is there an indication that the pilot took off and made its way back around to try and get back to the airport? I have not had a chance to, to look at Flight Aware yet. We also look at um, FAA information that it's in addition to Flight Aware, we, we can get more of a thorough track through them. But usually it takes a day or two to get that information. But once we look at that, we'll, we'll look at the flight track to see if there's any indication of a, of a turn back towards the airport. I can't confirm that right now. What's the rest of the day of the flight? Okay, we're going to be getting the scene safe. We're going to try to get the power back on. And we're going to try to get the, the, uh, the left wing tip out of the tree. And then I'll do some initial documentation, uh, getting ready for my team to come in tonight. And then we'll be out here all day tomorrow. Will we be out here through the night as well or just morning? No, we don't, we don't work during the night. It's just not safe to do that. So, but but the scene will be secured by the uh, by the sheriff. We had some people say perhaps engine failure. Can you even tell by that? I, I can't speculate on anything like that. Uh, you know the propeller is, is right there next to the to the wreckage. We look at indicators on that to, to give us a, an indication. 
but my initial visual inspection of, of the engine, we didn't find any evidence of a catastrophic engine failure, such as one that would break the case open or anything. There's nothing like that. So what's that really mean in layman's terms, in, in your experience? It means we have a lot more to look at, okay. yeah. And we don't rule anything out on scene. We just, we're, we're here just to just to gather the facts and then put everything together at the end of the investigation. Okay. Thank you, guys. This will probably this will probably be the only briefing I do. Um, there will be a preliminary report. Uh, everything is on our website, ntsb.gov. So if you visit the website in about a week's time, I'll say maybe this this time next week, um, the preliminary should be uh, published. It'll have more information than I have today. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you bet.